Now, when people hear about the fossil record and about genetics, they usually think that these two disciplines confirm Darwinian evolution. The fossil record shows deep time and transitional forms, and uh, genetics shows, the, for example, things like drug resistance and microbes and uh, shows microevolution. And if you extrapolate microevolution over long periods of time, then you have macroevolution. But actually, if you take both disciplines together, you get a major problem for Darwinian evolution, and this problem is called the waiting time problem. And the problem is the following. The fossil record establishes certain windows of time for either the origin of certain groups of organisms or for certain morphological transitions. For example, the origin of feathers or the transition from land-living ancestors to fully marine whales. And there you have dated fossils and you can say, well, it took maybe, let's say, four or five million years to make this transition or to get this organ. And on the other hand, you have the field of population genetics. And population genetics is a methodological apparatus to make calculations. How long does it take for a certain mutation to arise in a population? That is one waiting time. You have to wait to get the right mutation in the population. And the second waiting time is this mutation has to spread in the population. The technical term is has to become fix, fixated in the population so that all members of the species have the same character. And these two waiting times, now you can compare, does the fossil record and these windows of time established by the fossil record accommodate these necessary waiting times for the required genetic changes? And if you do the math, and uh, it's actually relatively easy, you have a formula of population genetics and you only need a few variables like uh, mutation rates, which are known by experimental data for different groups of organisms. Uh, you need uh, the population sizes where you have reasonable estimates by comparison with recent organisms. And you need the generation turnover time. So for example, if you have human-like organisms, then it's maybe 25 years for each generation. And then you can do the calculations. And what the calculations show is that uh, if you, for example, have cases where you need coordinated mutations, where two changes have to come together to have an adaptive effect, Empirical data suggests that you would have to wait for a single of those mutation, combined mutations, longer than the existence of the complete universe. That is, for example, happens when you look at malaria and drug resistance against the drug chloroquine, and you transpose the data. You had to wait several decades to get this resistance in malaria, and if you transpose the data from the population size of malaria and this very short generation time on vertebrates with much lower population size, much longer generation times, you get at these numbers of longer than the existence of the universe. You can also do mathematical modeling, then you get calculations which are a little bit shorter, and, and Darwinian uh, biologists said, well, we have refuted this, we arrived at times, for example, for human origins of 215 million years for a single coordinated mutation. The problem, though, is the fossil record shows we have only six million years available between the uh, supposed splitting of the chimp lineage from the human lineage, uh, lineage to modern humans. So it's much more time necessary for a single of these coordinated changes. And this shows the Darwinian uh, mechanism doesn't work in the available time frame, even if you assume the completely mainstream dating of the age of the Earth and of Earth history.